everybody, it is Paint Pouring Sandy here, and what I'm going to go over with you in this video is how I finish my paintings. Um, I'm going to go over how I finish my paintings on canvas, and also how I finish these really fun little um, trinket boxes that I do as well. So let's get started. So the first thing that I do, since I do use silicone in my paints, is I use cornstarch on my paintings, and what this is going to do is help pull out that oil. It's not the silicone itself, it's, it's the oil um, from the silicone. That makes it difficult for sealers to adhere to them. And what I use is just a very inexpensive beauty brush. I think I bought this on Wish as part of a, um, a package. I think there were probably 12 or 13 beauty brushes that came in it. I don't wear makeup. I don't need beauty brushes except for one really. Um, so. I have this extra brush. So I'm gonna, it's very, very soft, and it's gonna help me get this cornstarch into the nooks and crannies here on this painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, I'm gonna dip it in here, and I'm gonna use circular motions like this. To work this cornstarch, into my piece. You'll notice as you work it in that the cornstarch will clump together differently and will have some humidity to it because it's soaking up that oil. This is something I don't rush through and I really take my time to do this. why I take my time to do this is because I don't want silicone left on my pieces because if you do that if I were to choose to resin this later on my resin would not stick and I've learned that from personal experience some people will use baby powder that is the cornstarch version of baby powder you can do that as well um, I've also heard some people using baking soda. I, I feel like baking soda is a little bit too gritty, personally, and that it could end up damaging my piece. So I, I personally don't use it. Others might have really great success with it, but I personally don't do it. Um, another technique that I've heard people use is rubbing alcohol. Just know that really with any of these techniques, you can remove paint from your canvas. Not only your canvas, but you can remove it from, you know, whatever, whatever substrate you painted this on. So again, I'm just going to work this in here. I'm going to get a paper towel here. And I just want to brush the majority of this off the top because now we're going to do the sides.
I've also already signed my piece um, before I'm doing this. Because once I'm done with the cornstarch, the next thing I'm going to do is use my mix of just a little bit of Dawn dish soap in water. I suppose you could use any brand of dish soap. I just personally use Dawn because I have allergies. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this along my painting. And I'm going to check to make sure that I'm not taking off any paint because as I mentioned any of these methods can actually remove paint. I don't want this soaking wet but I do want to make sure I got oil and my cornstarch off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. It won't take very long for that, especially since I'm here in North Texas and the heat and humidity is kind of crazy. And now I'm going to repeat that same process but here for my um, my wooden piece. All right. So we're going to use that same method. And I'm just going to use circular motions. Making sure that I'm working this in. And then I'm also going to make sure that I work it into the sides. Now on these, I'm not worried about working it into the top and the outside and bottom of this simply because I've just got straight latex house paint on there. No Floetrol, no silicone, no nothing. Like I said, you'll notice as you work it in that the, the consistency of the cornstarch changes. I hope y'all can see that, but it gets clumpy in a totally different way, almost translucent, um, as you can see it kind of absorbing the oils. Now I just want to work on getting the cornstarch out.
Now if I had painted the outside and the bottom of this, and I'd used any sort of my fluid art in terms of silicone or anything like that, I would be repeating this process on the sides and back. Um, I'm just going to finish the inside of this one as of right now because I'm not done with the back and bottom yet. But I wanted to have an example to show you guys. Okay. So again, just want to make sure that I'm getting all of the cornstarch out and I'm getting all the oils. I do have metallics in here, but I can tell you now that I've got I've got the oils out, which is great. And I'm going to repeat that process over with my wet paper towel with dish soap on the inside of this box. Now with these boxes, it's a little more difficult to get the paper towel to cooperate with me simply because this wood's grainy and it kind of catches. It's not a super smooth surface like my canvases are. And again, I want to keep checking to make sure I'm not removing any paint. So again, I'm going to let this one dry. Alright, so now I'm going to show you what I used as my first coat of sealer or varnish. Um, whether I plan to apply more layers of that or whether I plan to eventually uh, use resin on my pieces, I start with the same thing. So while I get this cleaned up, uh, I'll get everything else ready. Alright. So now what I'm going to do, now that this is dry, is I just want to take a paper towel over it, dry paper towel, just making sure that any dust, my fingerprints, anything like that are off of here, and also making sure that I'm not pulling up any paint. I'm going to do the same thing here on the inside of my wooden piece. Making sure again, no paint's coming up, no oil's left on the inside. So what I use as my first sealer on all of my pieces is polycrylic clear gloss. I personally really love the glossy look, the permanently wet look on all of my pieces. I have yet to find one where I like the matte look, um, where, like they look now while they're dry. Um, like I said, that it's personal preference or your customer's preference. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just open this up. By the way, if you don't have one of these really handy dandy tools, which you can get at Home Depot, Lowe's, I, I personally got this at PP&G uh, Paints when they gave me a gallon of free paint, gallon of free paint, it was awesome. Um, and I use it to open all of my either house paints or my um, sealers here. I also personally 
like to purchase my uh, sealer in this size container because it comes with the plastic lid. Um, the smaller sizes and even some of the gallons come with a metal lid and the ring here will rust and pieces of those rust will get into your sealer and then you're going to spend time trying to first avoid getting it in your sealer and then to pick it out of your painting when it lands on it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is mix up my sealer here. Waste not, what not. And then what I do is I use a plastic spoon here. And I pour my varnish, my polycrylic here, onto my piece. And there's a reason why I do this. I no longer use a brush of any kind, whether it be a bristle brush or whether it be a foam brush to apply my polyacrylic. I was tired of always getting brush strokes or brush marks in my pieces, no matter what direction I went, no matter how I did it, I always got brush strokes. So now I use this. It is a silicone beauty brush, beauty sponge, beauty blender, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, it goes by many names. You can find these at Walmart, um, Amazon. I think I bought these on Wish. And what I do is I take this, um, this side that's slightly Con, concave, convex, I don't know, slightly curved, and I'm going to use it to literally spread this out from the center, working my way out. And you'll be able to hear when you're doing this, if you choose to tr try this method, you'll be able to hear when you don't have any on, on here and you're hitting just bare canvas, it'll, it'll be kind of rough sounding. You can hear it and you can feel it. It won't be smooth. the top and use that to smooth out the sides here. And again, you'll be able to feel when you don't have enough coverage. Right. So this one is now um, going to be set aside so that it can dry. I let all of my pieces dry between coats of sealer. Um, I've found that if I use two to three coats of this polycrylic clear gloss, I'm very happy with it. 
I don't always, I don't typically feel like it needs anything else. I do see that I've got a hair here. So I'm just going to work that out just a little bit here. And then just go over this. Um, anyway, I was saying that I've found that if I get two to three coats of sealer on it, I'm very happy with it. And I don't feel like I need to put any other type of sealer on it, whether that be resin or some other kind. I, I don't really like to mix this with anything else other than possibly resin. I'm going to use the same technique on the inside here. The great thing about polyacrylic is it is self-leveling. So for the bottom of this piece, I can literally just kind of pour this around here. And now I can take, again, my little beauty sponge here, smooth this around. I can just spread this around and make sure that I didn't miss anything. Which I haven't. And so now all I have to do is just wipe this off. And dry it. Voila. This is clean, ready to go to be used on my next project and I've got virtually no waste whereas when I was using my brushes to try and accomplish the same thing I was wasting so much of my polycrylic by having to wash it out of my brushes and now I don't have to do that and then I can just literally Wipe this last little bit out of here. And again, dry this. And I'm set to go for my next time. Um, I'm a firm believer in using what's around me. So using what I have on hand and not having to necessarily go out and buy something with the exception of a few things like this polycrylic I couldn't really find something on hand to use that I was happy with um, but using things like cornstarch which I already had on hand to cook with um, you know these little trays that I've found my canvases things like that um, you know using a brush that I already had um, and just trying to be resourceful this this art form does not have to be expensive and you can build up to it you don't have to have everything at once um, it's something I really love about this this form of art so with these pieces um, as I was mentioning earlier they are self leveling so I'm going to give each of them plenty of time to dry um, I give anywhere between half an hour to two hours depending on the heat and humidity here in North Texas It'll vary depending on where you're located um, to dry between coats and I will then either apply another coat of polyacrylic or I will then apply resin to these. Um, it's really down to your own personal preference of what you choose to coat these with. Um, it's again whatever's gonna make you happiest. Now once I do want to 
coat the outside of this once this is all dry what I will then do is flip this over and I'll use some of my empty little cups here and I would have this flipped over upside down and I would be painting the sides and the bottom of this piece um, and it would be resting on these four corners so these you do both sides my canvases I just obviously do the top and the the four sides but like I said I allow plenty of time to dry between coats um, if I'm not going to use resin I do typically do a third coat of this sealer just to make sure that it's good and protected I've got kids so in case you know something happens to get spilled anything like that um, they're pretty much protected and it'll last a long time up on your walls as well um. all right so it's the next day and what I want to do is show you um, after drying time what that first coat of sealer will look like that I spread with my uh, with my silicone uh, beauty sponge here so this is my little wooden uh, trinket and I'm going to use the natural light from outside to show you this this is just one layer of that sealer hopefully I can uh, show you the edges here too in the light hopefully you can kind of see that here um but this is this is the bottom of that like like I said this is one layer of my polycrylic and then here's my painting that I did yesterday again this is one layer of polycrylic there are no brush strokes you will still see lines just like along here and that's just from where the cells formed but as I add second and third layers onto here those will disappear even like up here in this corner where my white was maybe a little bit thicker in one spot than it was like right here where it was a little thin right there you won't see that as I add other layers here's the edges again nice and shiny um, here's another piece that I didn't show y'all yesterday, but this is another one that I did, where I sealed it, and again, smooth, with the exception of where this, the cells formed, these all just have one coat of polycrylic on them, and all I'll have to do is just add a second coat, and I'll do that exactly the same way, apply it exactly the same way. Um, with this sponge here. I'll just apply it with this. And that's all I'll have to do. I'll use my spoon to pour it on and then I'll use my sponge to smooth it out. And it'll be even smoother on here since it's got the one one coat of polycrylic on here already. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you gained value from it. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up so that I know you like seeing this type of content and I know what else to bring you. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. I would love to uh, have you as a subscriber and bring more of this content to you. If you've got questions on anything um, in terms of what my steps were or anything like that, please drop me a comment. I love answering those and seeing how I can help the art community. Uh, thank you, and I hope you enjoy.